Yo! <laughs> so I guess these two go go back, go way back. We didn't see him in no regrets. Kenny! <laughs> but I guess Levi lived a full life, so we wouldn't see everything. These guns are crazy. It's like a it's a total game changer. Nice. Hey, my new favorite song. This Erwin shot is so bizarre because he just looks like a little adult. Like he has the same intense face in this little kid's body. It's really weird. I kind of love it though. What's the truth? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> what does a shoe mean, I wonder? Just add another mystery to the long list. Pain. Oh yeah, pain. Yeah, you know, like like the whole show. Oh my god, it scared the hell out of me. They're just so much more equipped. They're prepared to fight titans, but this is not... Whoa. Damn, this action though. It's so good. Levi not disappointing. Kenny. Well, we know from No Regrets that they will hire people if they feel the need to. It just keeps going. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, he is famous. I don't know how I, feel, how I feel about Kenny. He's something else. This is turning into a Western. And he did not disappoint. Did you see that action sequence? Alright, so he's kind of like a teacher. Yeah, I'm still wondering about that, the underground city. It's such a bizarre thing, keeping people contained like that and not letting them out without permits or something, or payment. Like, there's already a class thing going on, right? Now you add this whole other layer of people who are not even allowed sunlight. What do you think is going to happen? I feel like there must be some kind of ulterior motive for that, that whole place. Levi probably dodged a huge bullet just by finding something useful and meaningful to attach his energy to. Kenny maybe was not so lucky. Maybe Kenny's like an alternative Levi. Hobbies. Okay. Is that what this is? Right, right. Nice. Levi suddenly feels like the main character. Nice. This is so well animated, this whole thing, and conceived. It's crazy how early they foreshadowed that too. I think it's the second episode when they're doing combat training, but look at them now. It was only ever going to be humans because only humans are capable of evil, I think. If the Titans were just wild animals, it wouldn't be evil, it would just be nature being scary, you know? I feel like there's something about evil where awareness and heightened consciousness is, is essential. Awareness of wrongdoing, awareness of hurting others. And speaking of human evil, I'm kind of intrigued by Kenny's partner. I can't put my finger on it, but something about their interaction I think is meant to show something about them. They seem close. And this is a thing for me. One of the things I find the most humanizing is watching other people interact well with their friends. That's what first made me like Azula. And I had a similar moment right there with their conversation. You never know, right? Like, they definitely seem to be being framed more as traditional villains than anything we've seen so far in the show. But this is Attack on Titan and things are rarely as they seem, so who knows? He was just taking on this whole squad by himself. And he's like, he's using his cables better than they're using guns. Also his sword. That was very effective. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they've been training specifically for this, and the scouts have not at all. Oh no, they're defying Levi's orders. Oh no. John's in a spot right now. Nah, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. He's alright. He's alright. Not now! <laughs> Not now! Got it. So, Kenny's crew 
actually has specific gear for dealing with humans. I guess it's possible that Kenny made this, but what seems more likely is that someone else made this for a contingency against Irwin and people. I feel like they overextended themselves. They just played their hand and let them expose. Like, there's no questioning their hostility now, or their intentions. Probably despair. Who gets to choose indeed? I wonder about Erwin, you know, like I have a lot of faith in him, obviously, but he does walk a delicate line. I feel like what he said is totally just. If he is resisting the danger of other people trying to make decisions for all of humanity. You know, for me, that makes sense. If he thinks he's qualified to make decisions for all of humanity, while I don't necessarily disagree because I love Erwin, uh, I feel like that's where it gets a little bit dicey. Many of you have probably noticed that this is kind of a, a thing for me, you know, like the idea of thinking that you're better than others and therefore know what's best for them or that like you have some kind of right or are in some kind of privileged position that is above others and therefore gives you like the, the right to use people, let's say, or see them as a means to an end. I actually think that's a really common thought. It's not only kings or rulers or whatever. It's in everyday life where we evaluate the worth of others relative to ourselves. And I feel like for some reason, there's just this natural pull towards cynicism in that way, where we feel like we understand things really well and people who don't agree are foolish or even worse, evil. And there's so much appeal in that. I feel it. You know, I feel the villain pull sometimes where I'm like, maybe I am special. Maybe I am smarter than others. You know, maybe I do deserve more. But in my heart, I know that that's a mistake. And it's not a harmless mistake either. Because once you start going down that road, I feel like you can justify any, any number of things and you end up just destroying yourself, destroying your relationships, not understanding what true value is. I guess I don't really know what Erwin's ultimate goal is. I only have a general sense that he cares deeply about humanity and sees what he's doing as right. But, you know, sometimes that's not enough. That's not everything. There are not that many people who don't think that they're right. I just think what makes it a little bit easier to trust Erwin is that he has foregone with so many selfish desires. Like, we've seen him throw himself to the bottom of the heap time and time again, and so that's something that's difficult to fake. It's not impossible to fake. Although, just because he's principled in that way doesn't mean he won't do great harm. You know, it's very complicated. And maybe he himself is acknowledging that when he refers to it as a gamble. Did Armin shoot that person? He did. Wow. Yeah. John John hesitated. Nice save. They're like really working together as a unit. <laughs> that was a good errand though. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna copy that one. It seems like Levi is one of the few people Mikasa actually respects. It seems like he was immediately able to stop her from going after Aaron. Why did you hesitate? Wow. That's true, he'd be beating himself up about that even worse. Yeah, I feel like that was the right thing to say. Not that it makes it easy, but the perspective is right, I think. It's this guy? Wow, Mikasa has such a good memory for faces. Interesting. Didn't expect that guy to say something like that. This conspiracy goes deep. I always thought the military police were like, just kind of ineffectual, but it's a lot more than that. I also didn't expect this guy to be the kind of person that is swayed by the idea of other people being harmed and not getting food or whatever. I feel like that's one of the themes of the episode, actually. It's like, who are the, who are the good guys in all this? I mean, for us, I feel like it's, it's a little bit clearer. You know, like, Kenny and them attacked them, unprovoked. And so I don't think they were wrong to defend themselves. But it seems like that issue is kind of what the characters are grappling with. Like, what are we fighting for? And why are we still here? Just to suffer? Like I said, it's gonna be human enemies, and that's weird. But it seems like the characters are, are just now really waking up to that. And that's gotta be really weird for them. Because it's totally different from everything they've ever geared themselves up for. And... Just to throw this out there, that weirdly might give some credit to some of the other characters who have been framed as villains because of their terrible actions that led to a lot of death. Maybe they feel like that's a reaction to the, you know, the actual human evil that they know. And maybe it comes down to what Erwin said earlier about who gets to decide what happens. Don't you knock? He's getting dressed. 
Or would always come. What? By whom? What does it mean? He set them up. Yeah. Okay. That's more of what I expected from him. <laughs> yeah, she was ready to go. Who's the real enemy? That's because Hanji's doing it. Yeah, I mean, that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, I know, it's weird. It all happened so fast. Yeah, exactly. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it's not as scary as the Titans, right? But it's just sad. It's a lot more soul-crushing to know that. It's not the world you thought it was. This is just a terrible situation. I mean, I don't think they're in the wrong as much as they think they are, but it's got to be a huge shock. Especially because, just putting myself in their shoes, I imagine they, they get some satisfaction, at least, from thinking that they're on humanity's side. And they don't have a lot to be happy about, right? That's like the one thing that maybe some of them have been carrying with them, that they're doing the right thing for people. They're doing the right thing for their country or their city or whatever. And now here they are, Fighting people inside the walls. Like, you know, of course they're not going to deal with that well. Despite the difficulty of the situation, I'm happy that they're even reflecting on it. For me, that's humanizing because I feel like there have been moments where the characters are in a lot of danger of going all the way down that, that route of like, life is cruel. And so therefore, those people had what was coming to them. You know what I mean? The fact that they're considering it is humanizing. Oh my god, they've been- That's some bad faith, my dude. This is not it. Yeah, he's torturing himself right now. He's probably ready. Historia's family is the royal family. They got cigarettes? Like they go way back. Yeah. And I have a feeling these two are actually very similar. Levi and Kenny. So much for your merchant's nose, huh? You got a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> oh, I forgot. There's a new ending. Last time we didn't get it because there was the the battle with Kenny. Time to comb for clues. <laughs> no, I don't know how hard I should pay attention. Birds, man. Something suspicious about all these birds. Very Historia centric so far. Interesting. It's like a fairy tale song or something. The flowers again, too. That was interesting. Got all sorts of feelings from that one. <laughs> the previous ending, I think, had more of an emotional impact on me just because it's so creepy and weird. This one is touching, though, and very well timed for that episode. Or fitting for the whole season because Historia is definitely going to play a huge role here. She's the heir to everything. So that episode was insane. I feel like I just watched a bunch of them. There's just so much that happens in quick succession and there's so many tonal things happening. Like, I mean, first of all, it just starts off with that amazing action sequence, which by itself would have been enough great stuff for an episode. I think that was my favorite action sequence so far, just in terms of the way it was animated. It was so fluid. And Levi I already felt he was cool, but it's the best feeling ever when you like a character and they, they come through. They meet your expectations, or they exceed their expectations even. The chasing was great, I also loved the saloon shootout. And then emotionally, you have all this stuff for the cadets to deal with, like Armin shooting someone, which was probably unfathomable to him a few days ago. Like, when did the show begin? 10 days ago or something like that, you know what I mean? They gotta just all be in total shock. One thing I thought about a lot in the show is the idea that there are gonna be a lot of blurred lines. You know, like, who is the enemy, really? And now it feels like the show has kicked it into high gear towards that idea, and even the characters are picking up on that. The characters are reflecting on this as well. Back in season one, Erwin asked Eren, who do you think the real enemy is, or something like that, or who do you see, whatever. Turns out the answer is everyone except for the cadets is your enemy. If Reiner and Bertholdt 
and Annie were not enough to have on that one side, you know, with those powers. You got something coming from within as well. Although actually, I think that the fact that this conspiracy runs so deep and that, you know, they admitted to these, these terrible atrocities and that they're obviously big and organized leads me to believe that maybe Reiner and Bertholdt and Annie and crew correctly recognize them as a threat. Although I don't really know what they want yet. We know that the destruction of humanity is on the table, right? And I'm guessing that wouldn't be a thing if it wasn't the path to something else, that something can be rebuilt. And so that makes me think of uh, Irwin's question this episode, who gets to decide? Maybe that's what the battle's about. Who gets to decide what happens to humanity? And who gets to use Eren for whatever nefarious purposes they have in mind for him? For example, who gets to eat him? Maybe eating him gives you the powers, the powers of, what do they call it? Catalyst? Coordinate. It's just a lot at once. And I wonder if on some level the show isn't telling us very directly that there are no good guys here, or that it's rarer than you might have been led to believe at first. It's only the second episode of the season, and it's already intense. Very excited for episode three. I'll see you guys next time when we get probably some of this Historia father conversation.